I want to talk really about making digits. And um, I have some important disclosures to make. And one of them is that there's no science in this at all. It's really just a recreational tour through making digits. Um, and I've deliberately left out series and statistics and angles and um, grip strengths and all sorts of other things because I think it'll be quite long enough without that. You're almost all of you clinicians and I want to take you through 35 years of my clinical life and what I've learned and what I've done wrong. I hope you'll forgive me if there's no science. If I can and just relax really. Why would you make new digits? Well, I mean, that's kind of obvious. Either you haven't got enough or the ones you've got don't work or they're in the wrong place. And you can see examples of these here in this family with cleft hands. Um, I want to remind you after my last talk that mechanics and mechanics of the digits, somebody's got a hand raised. Do we need to respond to that? I'll, I'll leave you, Carlos, to respond to that. Yeah, no, no um, always. Mechanics isn't the only challenge. And this boy with Simbrachidactyly on the right side um, hides his hand. And the challenge for him is between his ears. It, it's the wetware, it's the brain, it's the mind, it's the feelings, it's the emotion um, that are the issue. I think if we could ask Lisa to stop raising her hand, that would help, if she doesn't mind. So. What are the characteristics of digits that you're going to reconstruct? And my, I'd urge you, um, this incidentally is a hand that's been drawn upon. It's not a piece of abstract art. It's actually a human hand with a trompe d'oeil effect. Um, I'd urge you to be realistic in what you try to create. You do definitely need to achieve length, alignment and stability. Uh, the old mantra of the orthopedist. Um, where you can achieve the most fundamental movement is flexion and extension. In terms of sensibility, um, whatever you do will have sensibility, but it, if it has pulp as well, that highly specialised septated fat of the pulp, that's much more comfortable than um, skin on bone. What I don't think you should expect very often is to create beauty. It's very hard to do that in digit reconstruction. So don't be hard on yourself. How many do you need? Uh, well, six is too many, really. And one isn't enough. And everything in between is a negotiation between you, the anatomy, and the parent, or, or, the, or, or the adult, if it's an adult you're treating. But you really, to be effective, you need two. And after that, we can discuss. And I, I've got this phrase, it's an irritating phrase, but it does say what it does. And that is the concept of the enabling cabling. That is the linear cable-like structures that run from the forearm towards the hand and enable the digits. And they are the flexor and extensor tendons, the digital nerves, the arteries, veins, and of course, the lymphatics. And there are two main patterns of absence. They overlap actually, and we'll see that later. And they're transverse or longitudinal. So you can either lose a longitudinal part of your limb or you can lose a transverse. And in the transverse absence, the proximal enabling cabling is present. And so you can build on that and make use of it. And in the longitudinal absence, the enabling cabling isn't there. And so if you're going to put digits onto that, you either transfer parts of the enabling cabling from another digit or you transfer another digit. And we'll see examples of both of those. So let's start with missing the truck. Let's start with the transverse absence in children. And the obvious um, congenital condition in children trans with almost pure transverse absence is ring constriction syndrome. There's a lot of controversy about the etiology, but essentially it behaves almost as if an amputation has occurred in a, in a plastic hand with a hot knife and bits of the hand are welded together and bit, bits of them are almost missing. But the absences are essentially transverse. That is to say the proximal enabling cabling is present and usually pretty good. And here you see on the right of the screen, a, a child who, who has the fused 
um, acro acrosyndactyly of uh, ring constriction syndrome with, 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 with other fistulae present, proximally the loops are going through those. And, and above you see the hand after it's been freed. And the problem with ring constriction syndrome very often after freeing is these bobbles that look like lymphodermatous tissue, but are hard and indurated and they're very hard to get rid of. And, and here they've, they've been removed and grafted. So the treatment options, uh, always remember the first treatment option is not to treat them at all, not to do anything. The treatment options for transverse absence are phalangeal transfers, distraction lengthening, simply deepening the webs or the clefts or microsurgical toe transfer. Now, if anybody in the audience wants to make a guess where I'm going with this, I don't think they'll find it difficult. Let's look at the acrosyndactyly ring constriction syndrome. Here's a child who has a thumb, metacarpal, and a part of the proximal phalanx. They probably have a very competent basal joint, but you can't tell because of the syndactyly and the tight first web, and they're slightly low on, on, on the other digits. Once they've been removed, uh, re released, you, you see that indeed there is a reasonable length here in the thumb, but, but a large part of the skin, uh, the skin envelope is empty and the first web space is virtually non-existent. So here, second toe transfer with a free groin flap to, to widen the web is an extremely effective option. And the reason for that is the enabling cabling is present. So you have a wealth of um, nerves, ten tendons, and, and intrinsic muscles you can transfer and create a very functional digit um, with a nail, a pulp, length, and joints, and most importantly, growth. You transfer the growing plates. So the other very commonly seen form of transverse absence is symbrachidactyly. Um, I really hate the term symbrachidactyly. I prefer transverse absence, but symbrachidactyly is, is, is there to stay, I think. It's still transverse and enabling cabling, that's the longitudinal enabling structures are pre present, but, but they're often very poor. And they include nerves and very often the median nerve is very poor and the ulnar nerve is better. And I'm going to show you an example where that's not true. They include long, long tendons and the extensor tendons are usually in much better, much more useful than the flexor tendons. And I'll show you why. They almost never include vessels within the palm of the hand that are useful. Here is the range of symbrachidactyly, and you all know about the classification and the teratologic se sequence. I want to, to draw, draw your attention to this con condition where, where the thumb is present, and then the symbrachidactyly, the nubbins, they, they become more and more rudimentary as you move onward, and there's this slope to the palm. And in this hand, I, I would expect to find no ulnar nerve a, a very poor median nerve, and, and I would expect the, the, the results of reconstruction to be very much worse than in, say, this hand or this hand. Why, why I don't know. So in Symbrachidactyly, you see very good extensor tendons illustrated here. And in this area of the palm enlarged here, you see a good flexor tendon, good ulnar nerve, you, you uncharacteristically have, a, have an ul, ulnar artery here, um, but, but the normal anatomy, the intrinsics and so, so, so on of the palm are not there, and, and uh, the flexor tendons are not normal. So again, the treatment options do nothing, phalangeal transfer, distraction lengthening, deepening. So I just want to talk about distraction lengthening, first of all. Um, I have used it. Uh, I do very occasionally still use it, but it isn't, isn't a technique I like particularly. In this child, I used it because the second toe transfer had, had outgrown the palm of the hand and the 
metacarpals are transected here and are distracted distally, getting, getting reasonable length gain. But it's a slow procedure. It has a very high minor complication rate. You prolong the medicalization of the child because you're going to have to repeat the procedure again and again. And, and you, you, you medicalize the child through, throughout their childhood. And, and you need astute parents. And I don't know what it's like where each of you is, but they can be quite hard to find astute parents. But on the, on the other hand, it's low tech and, and it's widely available. So it is useful. I, I don't use it very often, but with, with these reservations, it works. Free phalangeal transfers, I used to do a lot. And I'm quite um, unashamedly going to say that I'm giving this talk at the end of my career and I've been a consultant treating children's hands and enthusiastic about them long before the last 35 years. And I will show you things I've done I don't do anymore and tell you why. And one of them is phalangeal transfers. And um, the idea of the phalangeal transfer is that you take the, uh, the, the phalanx from, from a toe, usually the third toe. A, a lot has been made by Graham Lister and others in the distant past that it should be done before a year of age. And you must keep the periosteum because it encourages neovascularization. And, and uh, you must maintain the ligaments because if the bone isn't stressed, it won't grow. And so you have to attach the tendons and stress the bone. And, and here is a case with, a, with an em empty thumb, no skeletal ele element and a, a phalangeal transfer. And it works. Here, here is the result. A, a strong but short, short thumb grasping. It does work. There are cases in which it does work. But my experience is they don't grow. I know endless papers saying they do, they don't, they grow a bit, they grow wider, they do this, they do that. Look, look the epiphyseal plate is still open it must be growing that of course is not true it means the epiphyseal plate is not calcified not that it's growing um the donor defect we we used to talk about as if it was minor it really isn't and um it may be a simple procedure and its advantage is that it's simple procedure but that in my view is its only advantage that the foot can be dreadful um, if, if uh, you take more than one. And, and uh, to be fair, this girl has had a second toe transfer as well. The disadvantages are poor length is gained. I think there's almost no growth. There's no joint is transferred. It um, may conflict with, with a later donor and, and the foot morbidity is great. And I was very pleased to see that Lorenzo Gargani Garagani, sorry, Lorenzo, has um, co confirmed that in 40 children, the mean follow-up of 10 years, ubiquitous donor site morbidity increased with growth, high rate of emotional problems with the foot appearance, functional problems with footwear. It's, it's, it's for me, a very poor, poor donor site. And, and I know that Paul and, and others have, have said and measured to the point of a millimeter what the growth is, but essentially it's very disappointing, I think it's fair to say. So I don't do them. Now this same review of Simbrachidacli and, and other treatment options reviewed, um, re, re, reviewed distraction lengthening, um, and, and I quite like the conclusion, the indications of this lengthening are unclear. This treatment rarely normalizes appearance. Well, it doesn't normalize appearance and is fraught with complications. They then go on to discuss free toe to hand transfer and um, uh, they, they quote Graham Lister's 1988, not his 1985 paper, um, and go on to say that at five years follow up in a number of studies, the range is adequate, da da da. Read Michael Schenker's review of our, our cases. Um, but I'm pleased that, that, that the, the value of second toe transfer has at least been acknowledged because in Leeds, we've done more than 300 in ch ch children. Um, and it's my fault for not writing them up. But, you know, once you've shown it, 
works, how much do you want to write? Um, but I'm going to show you some examples. So let's talk about microsurgical toe transfer in absent digits in, in kids. And, and now the first thing, where, when you look at the toes, you realize is that they're too short. They've got a very globular pulp, but they are a wonderful hom hom homologue of the finger with, with extensor tendons, flexor tendons, nerves and, and uh, vessels in all the right places and growth plates. So let's go back to the pa paradigm for tr transverse absence, which is ring constriction syndrome. And, and this girl who, who's, who's, whose mother pe pestered me for a number of years to do microsurgical toe transfers and whom I resisted for a long time on, on, on the grounds that, that the hand was, was a very competent hand. Um, she has relatively normal in, in enabling cabling. And, and the other thing that's going in, 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 in her favor is, is that the MCP joints are present. Now you don't in a second toe transfer get much movement at, at the PIP joint. You, you do get a bit, but if, if you have MCP joints pr present, you can expect a, a Re reasonably useful result from, from that alone. And when you look in the palm here, you see the intrinsics, the, the flexors, the common digital nerves, um, the FDP and the lumbrical. You, you know you have a lot of material to, to work with there. And uh, they're short, but, but, but they're mobile, they're, they're sensate, and she now has the right number of fingers which for her were, was very important. You can argue about that. So in those 300 cases, I've learned a lot. The age one to four is the ideal age for it. Um, I, I, I have done them ra ra rather foolishly as young as five months of age, but, but there's no benefit in that. And you're asking the parents at a very vulnerable time to make a very difficult decision. So one, one to four years, one year gives, gives the parents enough time. Four, four years means that, 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 that you have the treatment complete before school for most of them. You, you have to have a good nistis. You have to have a good critical aftercare facility. And the key, key to microsurgery in kids avoiding spasm is keep the child vascularly full, free of pain, free of fear and warm. And, and if, if uh, you, you have ch ch children, you'll, you, you'll know that if you make them, if it, that if you dehydrate them or if they're in pain or if they're in fear or, or if they're cold, they go pale and, and uh, they, they shut, shut down periphery very quickly. But, but if you keep them full, pain-free, fear-free and warm, they'll be fine. And the key here is that if the flap flows at one hour, it will always flow and, and unless, there's a mis unless there's a mechanical change in, in the skin closure or the dressing or, 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 or a sy systemic change in dehydration or cold. So the, the, the reason I stress that is, is Many pe people fear microvascular to toe transfer in children, but you really, if, if you do microvascular surgery, it, it is the, uh, amongst the, the easiest microvascular surgery you do, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a joy to execute. What, what it offers then is length, a pulp, a nail. It offers growth, which is most important, re restricted movement, and sensibility. Of course, it, it doesn't restore normality. I tried to create at least one new pre, pre, prehension pattern. If, if you're not doing that, I think, I, 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 I think it's quite questionable whether you should do the toe transfer. And you'll see, see examples in a moment of uh, my mistakes, uh, in, including cre creating a bizarre or ugly hand. A long time ago, I decided that you could only take one toe from each foot. And, and that meant you could only recreate two uh, di digits. And we, we used to do the, them 
metachronously, we used to do one toe first and then wait and see how, how that went and where it reached and so on. But but you 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 medicalize the child twice, you you bring them in twice, and we went to doing both at, at one go. And and I would say um, that I prefer still to be the surgeon that that retrieves the toe from the foot, and and reconstructs the hand. I I think it's a false economy to have two two teams, um, but but that's been my experience. This child with sembrachydactyly had a toe, toe transfer for the thumb and, and one on the fourth ray and has large object and, and small object grasp and, and a reasonably good appearance in the feet. Um, I'm going to give you a few tips on this procedure and a few tips on polycization and I hope you'll forgive me if you already know it all so just zone out for a few moments. The, 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 the commonest mistake I see when when mentoring in microsurgical toe transfer is the agonizing um, hunt, hunt for a vein. The, the, the candid fact of the matter is that, that what you need to do is you need to make the incision, lift the skin, Stick your your scissors in, and they will automatically en enter the plane of, of other superficial fascia, which you can then divide the fat superficial to that, and that that is the plane in which the veins you are interested in, the big veins, lie, not not the little subcutaneous veins, and and you you can save yourself near near, near nearly half an hour of agony looking for that, that one important vein. Next is the arterial dissection. And, and the key to the arterial dissection is to find the fibular digital artery of the hallux, not, not the second toe. So you want to find this vessel here, the fibular digital artery, because when you divide that and, and then work proximally on that, you, you can use the artery as a handle and, and you can manipulate the pedicle and very rapidly dissect the, the pe pe pedicle from uh, uh, distal to proximal. And here is a rather vulgar attempt at doing that. You find the, the, you find the fibular digital artery here. You, you divide that. And, and then using that as a handle, you can work back and find the... the the, the first dorsal metatarsal artery, or, or if he lacks a first dorsal metatarsal artery, then, then the plantar metatarsal artery, and, and use, use this artery as, as a, this arterial stump as a handle to, to manipulate the whole vascular axis, which is very convenient indeed. Now, here's, here's a child who, 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 who has a metacarpal for the thumb, but, but an absent proximal phalanx and, and an empty skin nubbin. And, and, and he's had a, you, you could use a phalangeal tra transfer, I hear you say, and you, you could indeed, but you, you still have to construct a dig digit elsewhere. And, 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 and here we have a thumb recated re with a second toe transfer, another second toe on the ring ray, and, and the metatarsal growth plate has been transferred into the fifth ray re resulting in, in a in a non-vascularized um, stump here which, which which is still useful the, this is the bizarre hand um, it's it's uh, another child with with a metacarpal thumb on, only in the second toe transfer on ring and thumb um, and and it has large object grasp and small object grasp. It's an extremely useful addition to the hand, but it is bizarre in appearance, and I I worry about that. This this, this particular girl when went on to win a, a, a national violin competition, and 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 is completely resilient about the appearance of her hand. Luckily. Um, I just wanted to show an, exa an example of a child who has no digits, no metacarpal stump in the thumb, and you can't expect a very, you can't expect a very functional result from this. The less you have to work with, the less you're going to gain. 
the, the, the reason I show her is that I, I learned at about this stage that if you, and, and uh, these, these were metachronous transfers, so the right foot was done first and, the, and then the left uh, a, few, a few months later. And in between the right and the left, I realized that if you take the metatarsal out, the foot is very much better. And here is her hand, which if, if you look at the hand she started with, it, it's, we 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 haven't we haven't created a fantastically able hand, but but it is vastly more able than it was before, and and is indeed used. So then, I, I'm not one to bear a grudge, <laughs> but I was widely criticised uh, a while ago for doing microvascular toe transfers in this case and, and uh, kept cases like this because the argument went that that they already have a thumb a very good thumb and a, and, and, and a fifth finger and therefore they have a very useful prehensile functioning hand but it's a very weird hand and the argument that you add no function ignores the function of appearance so controversial, I know, and we can discuss it at any stage, but um, I, I really felt, based on the experience we'd had, that the likelihood of getting useful digits here was quite high. And so we went ahead and did it. And, and here is the hand before, the hand afterwards. And I'm so, so sorry, I know a lot of you have seen this, this video over the years. But it's very worth look, looking Rocky, at. Again. How long ago did you have your toe transfer surgery? So it's About only a couple of minutes. Ago. And what age were you when you had that done? Nearly six. And were both of the toes transferred at the same time? Yeah. And did you have any subsequent surgery? No. After that? No. Do you have any problems with your feet? No, I'm fine. Not at all. No. no trouble running. Your scars good. Yeah. What benefits do you feel this surgery has given you? Um, gives me more grip and strength for my right hand and more support. Support for large objects? Yeah. What sort of activities do you find that the new fingers are useful in? When I'm biking, they're good for braking. Right. More strength. And other situations where you tend to ignore them and use just your thumb and up? Um, just like more smaller, fiddly things. Overall, are you pleased that your parents decided to have this surgery done for yeah. you? Yeah, it's been worth doing. Yeah. It. You, you don't regret it. And no. you wish that your hand looked like it was. And no. So in terms of the benefits of the surgery, you've talked about some functional benefits. Are there any other benefits as far as you're concerned? Um, yeah, I think it looks more normal, like a normal hand. So that's good. Okay. I'd, 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 I'd agree with him. I'd, I, I think it looks more more normal. He 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 he's got the choice between using the thumb and little finger or 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 or, or all three fingers for large object grasp. So I think it is a vindicated procedure. Um, and here here's another girl with with uh, the same findings. I I won't labour the point, but uh, you 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 see what I'm saying. I think. And and yet again, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not going to show you lots more of these. I promise you. Um, so let's move away from uh, the microsurgical toe transfer. Oh, I got this this uh, vi video sent to me by by this young man who who was a, was a patient of mine and who had that procedure, uh, who who had great uh, brachydactylic ring and middle finger re reconstructed with. Uh, Microsurgical toe, toe transfers, and he's been, um, he's, been, he's, been a, he's been a good ambassador for the procedure, really. Um, the the one thing to say about the flexor tendons is they they are often a very co conjoined mass, and and quadriga is is a risk in this condition. Longitudinal absence. Let's talk about that. Um, this girl had had an ul ulnar thumb and a central mass. And if you're going to have a thumb in our world, it's better to have the thumb on, on the radial border. Um, and uh, we'll see examples of that now. So, it's, so here's the converse, a stiff thumb that, that, that doesn't work, 
would be better transferred as a as a rigid ray on the ulnar border and and reconstruct a flexible thumb but but a flexible thumb with, with, without a basal joint that that, that relies on um, fle fle flexion and, and extension. Now, not all longitudinal absences are only longitudinal, and and in this example of cleft hand, I, I was I was very surprised at the time they 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 chose to, to remove the um, the the. Tib, tib, tibial toe of the foot that we, we were able to transfer it to, to the radial border of the hand and, and find and find flexors and, and, and extensors with excursion working their way around the pulley of, of, uh, of uh, uh, the distal skeletal element. So, so rather than discarding the toe, we, we, we could make use of it in, in the monodactylic hand. Now transposition of the digits is the is is the normal way to go in in the most um, free, frequently seen longitudinal absence, which is the radial dysplasia. And polycization means ma making into a thumb basically. Um, it's usually the index. It doesn't have to be the index. You you can transfer for for any any digit. And I had one patient who 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 had lost a thumb and had a severe median nerve palsy with a segmental loss of the median nerve in 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 whom in whom we transferred the ring finger because when it becomes a thumb, the sensate pulp is is on. It, is on the on the border facing the other digits. So let's look a little bit at the indications for, for polycization, and, and they're they're really based around the CMC joint. If 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 your if your hyperplastic thumb has got a competent CMC joint, then reconstructing that thumb with tra transfers and bone grafts and web releases and so so on is likely to be worthwhile. Where, where, where the basal joint is either completely absent or, or not stable or not, not competent, then you have a choice in, in, in the 3B classification in, in the middle of either reconstructing the finger and trying to, the, the thumb and trying to make, make the best of what basal joint you have or polycization. And, and in my career, I've been an enthusiastic about Try, try, trying to salvage both 3B and 3C hands. Um, I, I'm no long, oh, have you not been able to see my screen? Uh, I'm sorry if you haven't. It must have been no, rather disappointing. No, no, we are fine, we're fine, Simon. Okay. We can see it, yeah. So, um, so the 3B and the 3C joints, uh, thumbs, I, I have been enthusiastic about microsurgical reconstruction with, with joint transfers and uh, free muscle transfers and all sorts of things. I, I no longer am because again, you, 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 you may have a technical tri tri triumph, but, but it is at the cost of medicalizing and hospitalizing repeatedly the child. Um, which I think is very traumatic. So if you buy and pay a lot for a thumb, it should be positioned radial, stable long enough and have a universal basal joint. And the results of the polycizations of, of the index finger are so good that all fraught attempts at, at uh, multiple stage reconstruction of the 3B and 3C, in my view, and it's not a view that a lot of paediatric surgeons share, uh, in, in, in my view, is not worth it for the child. And it will take a long time to prove whether that view is true or not. The contraindication in radial dysplasia is, is if you have an established ulnar prehension pattern. What, what you're essentially doing in polycization of the index, what, what you essentially should be doing is helping mechanically what the brain has already decided. The brain has already decided the index finger is a thumb, then you need to put its thumb in the right place, make it the right length and make it work properly. If the brain has, has uh, decided that the, the 
little finger is the thumb, then whatever you do to the index, it won't change its mind. So, so an established ulnar ul prehension pattern as this girl has, using very ably the, the little finger with, with, you might notice, a poor, poor, poorly corrected wrist, because then the little finger advances and is, is the digit that meets the world first. If that's the prehension pattern, you really won't, won't do well with a, with, a, with a polycization and you shouldn't do it. Other, other contraindications include if the index finger is stiff or inadequate, if, if the wrist is not corrected or the elbow is not corrected. Stuart Watson in, in uh, Manchester used to say that, that, if, that if the other hand was good, you, you didn't need to do a polycization. I don't really agree with that. But, 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 but that's a matter you can make your own minds up about. But what I'm absolutely clear about is that this is the one operation in ch 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 children's hand surgery where experience counts. And of course, you have to get that experience. And the way to get that experience is work with a person who has that experience, be mentored by, by them. And, and if you get on well with them, that'll work well. But, but your first one will be absolutely terrifying, um, and if you want, and and you can get very good results, but you won't get very good results if you make it up as you go along and you aren't experienced. So if you have a unit nearby where where a surgeon has done 20, 30, 50, 100, then then work work. With them to learn the craft and the technique, um, and and the person to um, ape is is uh, is is without a doubt, uh, but but Gramco, Dieter but Gramco, um, he did something like five hundred, eight eight hundred pop pop polycizations. And over my career, I've seen many slightly egotistical surgeons say, oh, I've improved on Buck Grunko with this, I've improved on Buck Grunko with that, I do it this way, but Grunko didn't do this. I have never found a better technique. And, and I have watched many, many surgeons. And I'm very lucky to have the vid video that, 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 that our Dita made before he died. And if you want to see the results of that, I'd be very happy to share that. The long-term result I'm just of, the going to show you this of the index one, finger just of another show patient shows the improved he's... function and appearance. The main movements of the thumb, that is to say the flexion, extension, adduction, radial and palmar abduction, and therefore the entire opposition movement are made possible by this meticulous operating technique. So whilst it's a very um, 1980s video, it, it, it shows every single step of the way. And if you can see that video and, 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 and learn from, from that video, it's pure surgical gold. Now, I'm going to go through the polycization technique. And I know this isn't a lecture about polycization, but forgive me if I do this, and I'll do it fairly quickly. And, and the key to it is that you excise the metacarpal, you rotate the digit, you hyperextend the, the, the metacarpophalangeal joint, having removed the growth plate here because you don't want it to go on growing there. And uh, the disposition of everything else is, is very straightforward. And, and I'm going to show you one child, this child A, and, and interspersed with, with uh, this operation is child B. And it'll be easy to tell which is which because child A has the skin flaps marked in red and blue so, so, so that at the end of the procedure, you can see where they lie. And I'm just going to give you a few hints because if you want to learn more about this, I'm happy to talk to people individually or, 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 or try and share the video. The one key is that the dorsal incision must extend beyond the PIP joint. Um, and here you see the dorsal incision extending beyond the PIP joint. And this produces a flap here and a flap here and the radial on the side. And I like to get a vein pre preserved in, in each of these flaps. You see the vein there and there. You don't have to have a vein in each. I, I have had, I had cases where I couldn't get a vein in each, but I, I, I like the, the, the security of one vein in each flap. 
and and then you set, set, separate out the the in uh, the the intrinsic ten tendons and lateral bands in, in into which they flow and and that has to extend beyond the pip joint because if you leave it proximal to the pip joint they won't act at, at the pip joint and here you see that again the lateral bands divided down to beyond the pip joint and then then if you turn 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 your attention to the flexor surface you you preserve the radial and and the 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 ulna, ulna, the ulnar digital artery and here you see the digital nerve splitting uh, uh, around the digital artery you you have to divide one branch of that one way or the other and and one key step here is is that you must divide the flexor sheath well beyond and and up to the pip joint because of course that's going to become your CMC joint and 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 you want a little bit of bowstringing there at the end of the procedure and here again again in this child you see the the the, the ulnar digital nerve splits 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 around the vessel and we're going to have to divide that that little fascicle there and 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 then split the sheath right the way up uh, and there you have the sheath uh, split and, and actually removed then you have the bit that I like most, which which is where, where when when you set the index free and and you sorry I'll go back you split splay the index and long apart and and uh, divide the, the the transverse metacarpal ligament, and and then remove the metacarpal, excising it through and including the epiphyseal plate and leaving the head of the metacarpal present, and and uh, disarticulating at its base. Now, you can leave the dorsal part of the base of the metacarpal. And one of the advantages of that is it thrusts the, th the new thumb volar to the plane of, of other fingers. And, and that's the one modification on, on, on Buck Cramco's technique that, that, that I really like. Here, here again, you have the metacarpal excised and, and you hyperextend the joint because, of course, the, the metacarpophalangeal joint of, of, of the finger is an extensible joint. And, and, and when, when the thumb is in position, you, you don't want hyperextension at that joint. And then you, you take the extensor tendons and sh shorten one and, and use the other as an ab abductor, which you'll see in the next slide. Here is the abductor tendon, and here's the shortened extensor. And what I didn't mention before is, is uh, the dorsal digital nerves that are preserved along with the vein, and, and, and uh, you can just see one there. And then the skin flaps. What I like about this procedure is, is this skin flap, which, which makes the web, and it makes a wonderful web. And what what is important is that the tip of this flap goes goes far enough in into the long finger lateral border that you create a web that joins the thumb at, at the level of, of the of halfway between the new MCP and PIP and, and IP joint. Um, and here you see where those flaps have ended up. One here making making the radial border and one here making um, the web and these scars do not contract don't ask me why so we've talked about the the pros and cons of reconstructing that one thing i want to say about the scoring systems there's always a new scoring system coming along none of them so far score this which is the mind of the child and 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 anxiety about appearance you should be able with a, with the, the 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 quality of the thumb you end up with as 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 our Phil Sykes showed very well is directly related to the the, the quality of the in in, in uh, of the index finger you start with, but with a with a good index you sh you should be able to create a strong, powerful, good looking thumb. Now we'll move on. I'm going to say a few things about, about adult trauma, and I'm very conscious of the time, so I'm going to nip through a few things, and the last case um, will be in about 
five or six minutes, I hope. <laughs> so rare examples. And there's a reason these are rare. I don't do great toe, toe transfers anymore. I never do monoblock transfers anymore. I have done them. You're going to see things I regard as mistakes. I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the heterotopic replantation for, uh, at the interval and a little bit maybe about timing and indications. This is a child very early in my career, I think 1989, 1990, who, 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 who had a, a, uh, an electric bar fire burn and on whom I used a great toe transfer. Um, it makes a very good, strong thumb. It makes a powerful, broad pulp. Um, he, he's, he's having an, an opposition transfer here. I, I, I have no, no regrets in the hand at all, but I don't like the defect in, in other foot. And, and I think now I, I wouldn't accept, accept that, that, that defect, which is why I don't use the great toe for many things or even, even really at all now. But even before that, in 1985, I did this case. And, um, and in those days, it was relatively unusual to do this. And, that, and this is a crush, a crush, a, a crush avulsion with a, with a pedicle groin for cover. And, and he, 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 he went on to have a great toe Tra 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 transfer and an extremely functional result. He he didn't mind the foot defect, but I still think I I would now I I I would now use a second toe for this. But but there are many variations on 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 great toe toe transfer from the wraparound flap, the trim toe transfer, the nail and the partial pulp, as you see here. The, the wrap around the nail and the partial pulp with a with a bone graft for I I think this one was a melanoma and uh, this one was an SCC. Um, so I'm 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 not going to speak about those. You can you can uh, you you can come across the, those in a lot of places. I I will speak briefly about monoblock transfers. The, the, this is a case of Fu Chan Wei's, and and he had metacarpal hands with split skin and and our split skin was re resurfaced with with uh, pl pliable flaps and 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 then Fu Chan did a monoblock from one foot and a great toe and a second toe and a third toe a second toe or two two second I, I can't work out which way around it was but he, here is the monoblock and here is the the third toe I think and the second toe um, it, it's it's a very impressive restitution of of hand, hand, hand function where where no hand function exists, but it's a dreadful condition in the feet. And, and the only monoblock tra tra transfers I've done is this man who was repairing the roof of the Burns unit when he fell forward into hot pitch with both hands. Ironic. And, and had bilateral metacarpal hands. He was a self-employed manual worker, and he chose the, the procedure. This is a long time ago, a, a, a bilateral monoblocks and hallux. One monoblock failed. So he, he, he was left with a thumb and, and a palm, and, and we, 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 we lengthened the metacarpals of the, of the, of the palm. And here he is with his hands working. Now he's he's very unusual. He's he's an extremely motivated, dri driven man manual worker. And and I don't regret the procedures we did for him, but I think I would not um, I, I, I would not repeat that, that experience because of the dread, dreadful damage to the foot. And nowadays, I'd, I'd, I'd look at hand transplantation. I just very quickly say that of, of the Leeds series, we've now done 14 transplants in what, what is really six years, because we had a big gap after the first one because of commissioning changes. And we had a big gap because of COVID. Um, and the results, this is our first case 10 years ago now. Um, and, and he had the right hand transplanted and he's fine he's fit he's well he's he's 
mildly hypertensive, but he's got function that no monoblock and toe, toe transfers would give. He, he's got appearance that no monoblock and toe transfers would give. This, this you can't do with a, with a prosthesis or a, or, a, or, a, or a monoblock transfer. So now the, the, the monoblock, as far as I'm, I'm, I'm concerned, is, 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 is likely to remain a very, very rare procedure. And may, many of you all know this girl who had this kind of metacarpal hand. We, 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 we couldn't do monoblock and toe transfer on her because she'd also lost her legs before anybody says anything. And look at the results. This is a bit of Glaswegian self-defense class. Um, but look at the result, the, the aesthetic, the functional, the, the movement, they're remarkable really. And, and if you go back and, and look at the results of Fu Chan Wei's monoblock or, or my monoblock, you would, I think, agree this is the first procedure to discuss. And, and here she is climbing a wall with her more worryingly um, problem prosthetic legs. One last thing about toe transfer is you can create a very ugly hand. But this boy who had a who, who had a lawnmower in, in, injury and then had skin cover and, and then, then a second toe transfer has, has a hand that when static looks ugly and abnormal, but, but which in, in joins in movement very, oh, sorry, it didn't come. I think it'll come. Yeah, very well indeed. It, he, he, he looks fluid and he bring, bring, brings the idea of dynamic cosmesis that uh, Donald spoke about last week. Um, now, uh, last thing I'm going to speak about, and I promised you I'd try and stop now, is a segmental or in, in, in intercalary traumatic defects. Now, I've been an evangelist for microsurgery and hands all my career. And I know that it's tedious and boring and sometimes slightly patronizing to go on about it. And not everybody enjoys microsurgery or has the facility or, or wants to um, do microsurgery. But I think now most hand units have access to microsurgery. And what I want to say about this is that if you get an, an an injury like this, do you really want to throw it, it away the, the night it comes in or do, or do you want to get your, your microvascular surgeon to re revascularize it and, and, and uh, then, uh, then discuss the options? And, and I'd like to think that you would do that and we, we've revascularized the four fingers here, the thumbs beyond salvage and, and we've replanted the palm and and that will 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 go on to be reconstructed regrettably i've i've uh, not got the illustrations of that but i have got the illustrations of this girl who's an 18 year old who, who who caught her hand in a hot press and the hot press ran across the palm of the hand which is why in this rather bad polaroid the 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 the, the, the digits are Blue, blue and engorged they're, they're not burnt that they they just have no no venous out, outflow at all and and the blood from the palm has been sque squeezed into them and and that hand that is dead and therefore the intercalary defect is there there's a transverse absence in the amputated parts of the fingers plus thumb now the groin flap, the pedicle groin flap, and I had flu this day, so I apologise doing a pedicle groin flap, but it seemed a good idea at the time. Indeed, it was, and and leaves you with this stump. But but the fingers, I I didn't know what to do with, and I thought of the piglets suckling in a row like this, and so we took the radial artery and replanted the fingers onto the contralateral radial artery with an anastomosis for each digit um, uh, along the way and the veins into the vena comitantes. Um, and that left us with this, which then meant that, 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 that we could rehabilitate the digits 
passively, not actively, of course. And, and, and that then when we want to transfer them back on, on to, to the uh, right, right hand, we, we can raise them on, on, on just the radial artery and vein and, uh, and uh, the digital nerves had, had been preserved as far as they were able. And, that, and then we can, we can replace the flexor tendons with rods because I don't think you can, re you can rehabilitate extensors and, and flexors very well in the same case at, at the same time and, and then transfer them to the hand with a, that's the groin flap, but those, those are the replanted fingers and, and a hack and toe, toe transfer at the same time and replace the rods with grafts wo woven in at the wrist. And here she is. Um, now this is 17 years ago, I think. And we had a night out for a cu couple of, uh, unit workers that were leaving and and I ran into her at, at this night out but she thought it was too weird for me to take photographs of her hand in a nightclub so I, I, I don't have the 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 18 year review but but she still has the hand uses uses it as as well as here and and and, and is completely at peace with it so conclusions, no science, very sorry about that. Microvascular surgery remains, it's here to stay, isn't it, of course, and it's a powerful modality. Transfer, e.g. pulsization, if enabling cabling is not present. In kids, the toe transfer beats almost all other options if the enabling cabling, that's a transverse absence, is the case. I think there are very few places any, anymore for a whole hallux transfer and and maybe none for, 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 for a monoblock if you haven't discussed hand transplantation first. The, the intercalary defects don't throw, throw anything away on the, on the night of in injury and you can wait for a daylight decision. And I think hand transplantation, what's changed most in the last 10 years is I'm now convinced that hand transplantation is, is a standard of care for bilateral loss and may well become a standard of care in some examples of unilateral loss. And that has changed the landscape of hand, hand loss and, and uh, absent, traumatically ab absent uh, digits. Thank you very much. Uh, because I'm slightly evangelical about hand transplantation, I would like to remind you all to join the organ donor register. And then when you've joined it, let your family know that is your wish, because otherwise there's a risk they'll override your, 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 your altruistic decision when you're dead. Thank you very much.